So Gina's going to, um, so I'm going to demonstrate the jackfruit, or the not chicken pies, how does that sound? Mm. But Gina's going to give us some information first about the famous... Jackfruit. So jackfruit is a really strange thing because they're about, I kid you not, about this big. They're about that big. They're the biggest fruit on a tree. Right. I mean, you can get that, that, I mean, you might think that's the size of an avocado. They're not, they're like that. They're huge. And they are um, the biggest fruit on a tree. I mean, you can get, like, you can get those huge pumpkins, so they're not the biggest fruit, but they're the biggest fruit on a tree. And they're a bit related to breadfruit. Who here knows what breadfruit is? Some, some of you see it in the islands? So they're those big green blobs about this big, and they're very savoury, aren't they? That, that, that you could use them more like you'd use potatoes, would you say, where it's a savoury thing? Um, but instead of being underground, they, they grow on a tree, just like these great big huge things do. Look there, there's a lady. There's a, could you not? Look, that's them. Yeah. So you don't see them in the shops here very much because they take up, they had half a dozen of them, it would take up the whole shop, I suppose, wouldn't it? Um, and um, the, they come from the tropics, so you wouldn't be able to grow them here very easily either. So um, we get them like this in a tin. That costs about how much, Sister? It's two seventy, but you can buy the organic for two dollars dearer. So yeah. the organic's available, mm. but we're on a budget here. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. And so that the the, um, the fruit, as you can see there, it's been cut in half, and the seeds. This yellow thing here, that's them here, and they take the seed out, and it's quite a fleshy sort of a um, texture. And you can, so it can be quite, a, it can be quite meat-like. And but you've got to know what you're doing with it a bit. I think, don't you, Kerry? You can't just sort of. I've tried using it only once, and I would say it was a fail actually when I did it. Really? Yeah, it didn't work that well. All yeah. right. Well, mm. I only started. What else are you going to tell us about it before? Um, I... Well, this here, like you can, they call that Kentucky Fried Jackfruit, there, and this one they call pulled pork jackfruit. So you can, you, if you know what you're doing, and I have had it not, I, I have eaten it, and I've, I've been very impressed with it. But you've got to know what you're doing with it. So Kerry is going to show you what you do with it. All right, thanks Jenna. So um, we'll go back to the, um, Craig's going to show you. I'm just sautéing some onion, some garlic and some mushrooms uh, here in my pan. So the truth of the matter is I only, I only cooked jack, I've never cooked with jackfruit before. I've tried it many times and I've never liked what I've eaten, so I've never bothered to cook it. So I say again, until, you've got to know what you're doing. Until, until I went to Dargaville only about a month ago. And we had this fabulous pie, and I thought, that is lovely. So, with a bit of modification, because you try the way the recipe goes, and then you think, oh, a little bit more of this, and maybe not so much of that. So, that's basically what I did. I modified, and that's what you ate tonight. So, um, and yeah, I think it's a bit of a winner. I don't know what you all think. Yep. Yeah, bit of a winner. And especially for those who are still looking for something meaty. Mm. So, um... This is the, the this is the jackfruit drained, and yeah, it, and I thought, how's this going to work? But actually, as soon as you put it in the pan, it starts to um, break up. So you just need to work away at it for a little while, and as it cooks, it breaks up and just gets um, workable. Till finally, it was what was in your pan. So I really just wanted to show you that with the mushrooms, the um, garlic, the onion, and the jackfruit. Okay, so it just requires a little bit of, you can, because these pans are not designed to use metal on, uh, we did them in pots this afternoon, or this morning, and Michelle was cutting away our last batch of jackfruit with a, what did you use, a fish slice or something, wasn't it? So you can actually get a bit more aggressive, but in this pan I won't. So I'm actually going to turn that off now because that's as far as I want to show you tonight. But to that, I'm adding some chicken mussel. You've got it in your recipe. I'm adding some oregano and thyme. I'm adding some coconut milk. The original recipe had coconut cream. I, d I just felt it was too coconutty. So I went for milk, which I really like. Some corn flour and some soy, soy milk. Or you could use other, other plant-based milks if you prefer and just make a thick mix with some cubed cooked potatoes. That's simply all it is. Done. So and the potatoes then, are cooked first. And then we've got some vegetarian pastry, which we don't use a lot of pastries, but this is a special occasion and it's a special month. So you buy this at Countdown, and um, 100 and 
30 pies later. <laughs> But you know what, I tried them in muffin tins because I just got this idea, oh, we could just make a nice little individual, so what you've seen. And I had just standard muffin tins and they weren't big enough. So we did a trial run last Thursday, my first experience with cooking. Tasted fine, but just not quite right. So I went off and bought a whole lot of these larger muffin tins, jumbo muffin tins. That worked well. And then I had to think about how I was going to actually cut it because, you know, like bit of a mission to cut that many pies if I didn't have a cutter. But we actually have a pie maker at home. My husband's good at buying gadgets. And um, it, it just happened that the pie maker was exactly worked. So these are, my, these are what I did individually around. So And guess what? This actually makes two pies. So you just kind of cut it out like that. And then that's the bottom. Excuse my fingers, we are clean, but I've got beetroot colour on my. <laughs> so I hope you're not looking too close to the film. So that's, yeah, it's just as simple as that. They are a bit tedious. I have to say, by the time we got to 150 million, I was over it. But um, anyway, it's, it's a feeling of satisfaction, isn't it? When you've gone out and cooked a meal and you step back and it's all done and everyone enjoys it. This is actually a thrill to know that most of you, I think most of you have enjoyed your meal. <laughs> We've got some heads nodding. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so, um, I did have a spoon here, didn't I? Yes. So, so then it's just a little blast with a spray because I really wanted to know they were going to come out of the pan all right. In fact, that's why the muffin tins I did the trial run with stuck a little bit on the bottom. I thought, oh, this is going to be a disaster. So, but I had one muffin tin that was just a little bit more, um, with a little bit more, um, sorry, that can's just about out, a little bit newer and they've just slid out beautifully. So I just knew I needed new muffin tins and Briscoe's were kind enough to supply those. I've just had a thought. Go, Gina. Well, you could do it differently. You could use phyllo pastry. You could get a sheet of phyllo pastry and just put a little scant brushing of oil and a squeak of salt and then do about three layers of that and then put that mixture that's in the middle just in a line down the middle and then roll it up and bake that like a strudel. That would be another way of doing it. Yeah, there's the lots quicker. of ways. Yeah. Like the gluten-free one, I just I, gluten-free pastry is a lot harder to work with, so I didn't even attempt to make the little pies with that. Yeah. But um, yeah, whatever. I mean, to make a bigger pie, it would be it takes a lot less time. But because this was actually a more economical but more time-consuming, so I'm just going to spoon the mixture in, and you only need a couple of. The one thing I haven't done is cut the vents. But that's all right, I haven't got a knife here. It's pretty basic. You just fill a couple of spoons, don't overfill, a couple of spoons in each one. That's your mixture, lovely. And, and it's best if you leave your mixture to go cold before you fill the pie dish. Thank you, Gina. And then just simply... Do you have to wet it? No, I, if, if you're just using it fresh, then no, it doesn't need to be wet, but if it starts to dry out a bit, I initially laid sheets and sheets and sheets, but it was drying out, and then in the end I thought, oh, hold on, I just need to rotate the dishes as I could. And our little lovely design, where's my little plate? Of, the <laughs> of our little leaves. <laughs> so you might need some, but that's just their little leaves. They cook up really sweet, don't they? I was thrilled. Huh? Ah. Can you see? Yeah. The plate's not a very good, I mean it's light anyway. But that's our little pies. And then they're basically 20 minutes in a standard oven. And there you go. There's your Christmas suggestion. Thank you. <laughs>